if you've got kids uh, and you put in your will, here's my guardian. So, for, for example, I've got a sister out in California. I've got a brother-in-law who lives here uh, in Arlington. Uh, they're, they're the guardians for my kids if something happens, right? Um, now, I'm lucky that I have a brother-in-law who lives in town, but if I don't have somebody who's local, what happens if my wife and I are in an accident and my sister has to fly out from California? It could take her a while to do that. So who's taking care of the kids in the meantime? Well, by default, it's social services. They're going to take care of the kids and hold on to them until whoever I've picked long-term can do that. So uh, what do I do? Is, is there a way to fill that stopgap? So you can write a temporary guardianship form uh, to say, uh, if I can't get somebody here quickly, then here's somebody local, friends or other family member, whatever the case might be. It's also very useful for grandmas watching the kids for a week while my wife and I go off to Italy. Now, I'd love to have this happen. I've yet to get a grandparent who's going to take care of all four of my kids at once. <laughs> if you have any grandparents that are willing to do that, send them over to my house. Uh, but you know, if you're going to leave them with, with no pair or with a babysitter or certainly for a longer period of time with somebody, it's useful to have that in place so that if there's an issue with the kid, they need to go to the doctor, if somebody needs to sign a school form, it's very clear that somebody can act in your shoes as the parent. In local parentis is the term, it's in the place of the parents, right? Uh, I actually have a form for this. If you want to send me an email, I'll be happy to send that to you. That's just, you fill in the blank, have a few witnesses sign it, and you can use it anytime you go on a trip or things like that, right? Uh, there's also an international travel form. If you're going to have your kids traveling abroad and they're not going to be with you as the parents, then this is very useful as well. Uh, so grandma is going to take the kids to Canada uh, for the week uh, or to visit the relatives in Spain or whatever the case might be. You always have this question of somebody coming back through customs with your kids. Do they have the right to leave the country? Is that okay? Can they come back in? It just Not that you have to do this, but it clarifies a lot of things to say, grandma's going to take the kids to uh, Bermuda for the week and it's perfectly okay for her to go through customs and come back and I as the parent give consent for that just uh, saves a lot of hassle. right? The other thing that's useful for kids is having their medical insurance and a HIPAA release there as well. So uh, again, grandma's watching the kids for the week while I'm out of town, and I want to make clear this is their medical insurance information, and grandma can look at their medical records, talk to their doctors, make an informed decision if I can't be reached, right? Uh, so again, that can be all part of that temporary guardianship form. So let me talk a little bit about uh, college savings plans. Uh, 529 plans, uh, is that's, a, that's the section of the IRS tax code. A lot of things are named like that. Like a 401k is section 401k of the Internal Revenue Code. So a 529 plan is from section 529 of the Internal Revenue Code. It allows you to put money away in this tax-free account uh, for your kid's college. And so it's kind of like a Roth account. You use after-tax dollars. You put it into the account. It grows tax-free. And as long as the money comes out for educational expenses, you never pay tax on the growth, on the income. Right? And it compounds each year on a tax-free basis. Every state in the country has a 529 plan that you can opt into. But if you use the Virginia plan, you get a tax deduction off your Virginia taxes when you put money into the Virginia plan. So the Virginia website is virginia529.com. And if you set up a plan there, you can have a deduction off your state income tax by putting away money for your kids. Uh, so the Virginia one, you can have up to $4,000 a year per account. So if you had three kids, you could have three accounts. And you could put $4,000 in each one, and you get a tax deduction off your Virginia income taxes. And that saves you about $300 a year on tax uh, because it's a deduction that lowers your income. right? And so that's a, just a bonus for putting money into the account on top of the fact that it grows tax-free, and it's tax-free when you take it out. Now, some people come to me and say, well, you know, Junior, who's two years old here, is a genius. He's going to get a full ride to MIT, and so he's not going to need the money for college. Well, if Junior gets a, a scholarship, you can take out whatever that amount of money is they got for the scholarship as if they'd use it for college with no penalty, right? Or my daughter is a fantastic gymnast, and she's going to get a full athletic scholarship, same deal, right? So there's two different kinds of 529 accounts. There's prepaid tuition. And then there's a regular account where you can just add money to it and use it whenever you'd like, right? So the prepaid tuition account, you're actually saying, I'm going to buy four years of Virginia in-state university tuition. And they, and they give a price for this every year. Uh, if you have an infant today, it's like uh, $65,000, right? You can pay for it all at once, or you can make payments over five years, or you can make payments over 18 years. The longer the payment schedule, the, the more money you end up paying total because they have less time to invest it, right? But if you do that, they're going to invest the money you give them. And even if tuition goes up faster than the investment, they guarantee that they will cover Virginia in-state university tuition, right? So you've hedged out of this uncertain future. 
if you don't use it for Virginia in-state uh, tuition, then they'll give you whatever the investment went up to. So you, your kid goes to MIT or somewhere out of state, then they'll say, well, the investment grew to this, and you, you get that amount to apply toward the kid's college. And so it's kind of a heads you win, tails you break even proposition. The other kind of uh, account, Virginia calls it the VEST account, is like a retirement account. You put money in whenever you like, it grows tax-free, you can use it for any post-secondary education, college, grad school, medical school, nursing school. There's no time limit on when you have to use that, right? So the, the prepaid tuition is tied to the age of the kid because they kind of figure out what the tuition will be that year. Uh, whereas the other one, you can hold on to it, and if you don't use it for undergrad, you can use it for grad school or give it to a sibling and a bunch of other things. Each state has their own 529 plan, so you have the option of investing in a 529 plan in any state. If you live in Virginia, you get the state tax credit, so they're basically giving you $250 or $300 a year if you put $4,000 in as a bonus. Uh, it seems like a no-brainer, right? Uh, but maybe you get much better investment options somewhere else. I mean, something to talk with about your, with your financial planner or to look at you know, these kind of things to see what makes sense. If you really know my kid's going to go to a University of California school, maybe you pick a California plan and get the prepaid tuition. But if you're not doing the prepaid tuition, then you can use a plan wherever you live and your kid can go to school anywhere with that. So, so to tie back into the estate uh, and gift tax discussion, if you're going to put more than $14,000 a year in one of these, you have to think about the gift tax ramification. And again, there's a way to split it up. So if you do the prepaid tuition, let's say you're going to pay the whole $65,000 today for your 14-month-old who's in the back here somewhere and have that used for their college someday, um, then you can treat that as if you split it over five years. You still have to file a gift tax return to do that. Uh, it doesn't, no, there's no tax, but you have to inform the IRS what you're up to, right? So be careful with that. Tax credit in Virginia is the first $4,000. If you put in more than $4,000, like say this year, then they give you $4,000 credit for this year and then and the rest of it rolls forward until you've used it all up. So if you put in 10,000 this year, you get 4,000 deduction this year, the rest would roll forward to the next year and so forth until you use up the whole $10,000. Um, so that's not, you're not limited, you, you can put in, uh, right now it's about $350,000. So it's, it's sort of the, the average cost of a four years of, you know, I don't know, is that what it's gonna cost to send our kids to college someday? I'm in trouble. Um, but they, they've got a special rule that says uh, kind of how much you can put in maximum over a kid's lifetime. Uh, but there's no annual limit other than dealing with the gift tax, right? So you could put in $14,000 a year, and your spouse could put $14,000, and grandma could put in $14,000, up to the total $350,000 lifetime per kid. Um, or you can have grandma put in $100,000, but she's going to have a gift tax issue, right? Um, so, so that's kind of the idea behind it. Um, but yeah, the, the, the $4,000 is just how much tax deduction you get in Virginia, but it continues to roll forward until you've used it all up, right?